Tuning a carburetor used to be black magic. With today's technology, reading spark plugs is a thing of the past. Today on Street Legal TV, we're going to show you how to tune your classic carburetor muscle car using the fast dual sensor air fuel meter. From installation to time trials, we'll demonstrate a step-by-step -step approach to optimizing your air fuel ratio for maximum horsepower. And once we're finished, we're going to take you to the Power TV Dyno to show you just how much power you can be giving up with a poorly tuned engine. Every once in a while, they open the cage at the Power TV Garage and let us come out and do some real-world testing. Today, we're at Irwindale in sunny Southern California, and I'm here with Cam Binty from Comp Cams, who's hooked us up with the classic icon of a muscle car, a 1972 El Camino. But the fact that we really liked about this car that intrigued us the most was it's never been tuned. This is really an El Camino in the raw. We don't know what we're going to get. It's got this beautiful 600 horsepower Pat Musi big block Chevrolet, but we really don't know what it's going to do. I mean, it's got a brand new carburetor, everything's new. We really need to test and to tune, and to do that, we're going to use the fast dual sensor air fuel meter because that way we'll know exactly what's going on. We'll get it perfectly tuned, maximum performance. In the Power TV garage earlier in the day, we installed the fast air fuel meter. Let's take a look at the highlights. We selected the fast dual sensor air fuel meter, which allows you to read two wideband O2 sensors for each side of your engine. That does require installing two bungs in each collector, but it will allow us to read the sensors individually or average them together. The nicest thing about the fast air fuel meter is its built-in data logger allows us to play back logged runs on the lighted display screen. That'll work great for our carbureted El Camino because we'll be able to adjust the carb to optimum air fuel ratio right at the track without having to use a laptop. After unpacking the fast air fuel meter, we had the fast digital display, the wiring, two O2 sensors, and a fast windshield mount kit. We started the installation by drilling two holes in our exhaust for the installation of the wideband O2 sensors. The fast display was mounted in the dashboard area and the included harness was connected between the wideband and the O2 sensors. In terms of wiring, the FAST system needed only power, key on, and ground to integrate into the El Camino's electrical system. Okay, our first step is to get this car down the track so we can establish a baseline ET and figure out what it's capable of. Of course, we could always just pull the plug, look at it with my keen eye, and figure out which way we needed to go from there, but I think we want something a little more precise than that. Well, I don't know how good your eyesight is, but you know, reading plugs, I mean, it's a matter of color, and so it's always kind of a tricky deal to know exactly where you are in terms of rich or too lean. Uh, the beauty of this deal is we've got the fast air fuel meter here. We're gonna know exactly where we're at. We're gonna have a digital readout. It's gonna tell us exactly what the ratio is. No more reading spark plugs, no more testing your eyesight. We started out with our first pass to see what our baseline air fuel ratio was during the run. During the run, our fast air fuel meter logged the air fuel ratio and told us we had a rich condition with almost 10.8 to 1 showing we needed less fuel. In fact, we only managed a 9.48 at 83 miles per hour due to the poor tuning and some minor wheel spin on the line. We're back after our first run and not too stunning. I mean, we have a lot of adjustment that has to be made with the carburation. And the best part is, is that the air fuel meter records what we did, so we know exactly where we are, we know exactly where the problems lie with this particular engine. We can tune it to perfection. So let's dive in, let's get it fixed. I'm ready. Okay, Cam, that's that, man. Let's take her back to the track and see how she does. Let's take a peek. It was time for run number two, and with our retuned big block, we were on a tear. Running 8.38 at 90 miles per hour, an increase of seven miles per hour, and over a second drop in ET. Just as we suspected, the numbers show the tuning at the track is very beneficial. Absolutely, and we picked up over a second on that last run. But the key is we need to go back and look at our air fuel ratio and see where we're at, see what the state of tune is, because we want to make the most power. It's all recorded right there. You know what I think would be a satisfying conclusion to this test is to take this baby back to the shop, strap it on the dyno, okay. see what we get. Now that we've shown the benefits of the fast meter with tuning on the track, we're going to take it to the Power TV dyno and make a few dyno runs. Our goal here is to see just how much power we're making at the wheels, both before and after the tune-up, as we did with the help of the meter.
On the first run, our poorly tuned engine showed a rich air fuel ratio and produced 447 horsepower at 5,400 RPM on the dyno jet. Air fuel was as bad at 10.8 to 1. We began to swap jets and retuning the carb to optimize the air fuel ratio. We made several runs using the fast meter to optimize the jetting combination. Here was our best run. Four hundred and sixty-eight point eleven horsepower and four hundred and eighty-six foot-pounds of torque at the wheel showed a twenty-one plus horsepower gain and more power under the curve once we optimized the air fuel ratio. So good enough for you? Yeah, man, it's quite the improvement, and I know the fast meter really helped us. When we started today, we were fat with almost an eleven to one air fuel ratio for a naturally aspirated engine. That's just not going to make optimum power. And by the end of the day. We almost picked up seven miles per hour and got our air fuel into the 13 to one range, all just by logging runs with the fast. Well, the, the fast uh, air fuel meter is, I mean, it's just an amazingly powerful tuning tool. It allows you to not have to carry a, a laptop to someplace like the racetrack, which is kind of a pain in the neck. And you can also see all your numbers both recorded and in real time. You can see immediately what you're getting. So you can make the tune up and, and get it right on the numbers. And, you know, it's nice to have a dyno, but, uh, you know, it, it's not always a real handy thing. But we like to run them because we want to see those numbers, right? Yeah, I do want to see the numbers. As a matter of fact, I'm such a creature of habit, I'm probably still going to pull the plugs and take a look. Look.